Newport, Rhode Island on Aquidneck Island was first established in 1639, and the oldest surviving house in the city was built in 1697. Many similar historic structures still exist throughout Newport along the streets once built for horse and buggy to travel. Today, the same streets, no bigger than they were when first built centuries ago, are clogged with large SUVs, pickup trucks, and other modern automobiles. Many streets are now only one ways, some without parking because of how tight they are just for one vehicle to safely drive through. The historic layouts of streets hurt traffic flow and slow down travel for those who come to visit Newport. Newport has been a destination for tourists for many years and it is also a location where many people commute to for work. The Newport Naval Base employs thousands of people and the tourist and hospitality industries do as well. Many of those who work here don't live on the island and have to commute on and off it daily. As for tourism, it is estimated that 4 million people visit annually. Some come to check out the history, visit the festivals, enjoy the beaches, come to shop, or go out to eat. Either way, there's tons of people traveling here, even in the off-season. With so many people around, parking can be hard to find, and what parking there is may cost you quite a bit of money just to park for a few hours. Once you finally find parking, you may be quite a ways away from your destination. In my experience, there have been times where I have parked several blocks away from a restaurant, which resulted in a long walk back to the car after a meal, and because of that, I don't think I ever went back to that restaurant. At least Newport is very walkable, and it's relatively easy to get around, but there are more easily accessible locations to eat or spend money outside of Newport if parking and walking is an issue for you. On top of the issues already listed, the main roadways through Portsmouth and Middletown to Newport have congestion issues. Being on an island with surrounding development, they can't easily be widened. This has resulted in many accidents on both east and west main roads that happen quite regularly. There was also local opposition to finishing the Route 24 highway south to Newport, so that was never completed either, leaving Aquidneck Island without a high-speed highway directly to Newport. On top of congestion, parking issues, and the stress associated with driving, and minimal transportation alternatives, there is also the issue of pollution. Many vehicles with just one or two people inside aren't great for the environment in multiple ways. There's pollution and use of fuels to power those vehicles. Having less people driving cars in a certain area would improve air quality and cut down on CO2. Rhode Island is looking to cut down on emissions, and cutting down on the amount of vehicles in a congested area would help them reach their goals. Now, what can you do to fix the issues with pre-existing roads? Well, roads aren't easily widened without land taking, moving utility lines, demolishing or moving structures, and of course, without spending a ton of money without even building a true alternative mode of transportation. You can't just build a new right-of-way either, as there's so much development and many historic structures in the way. Now, you could expand upon bus service, but buses already run to, from, in, and around Newport. But you're just driving on the same roads as the congestion from automobiles. The buses themselves are also part of the congestion issues, as they make many stops along tight roads where cars can't easily pass or seek an alternative route. You could introduce a ferry service on Narragansett Bay to shuttle people, but that doesn't let you access inland destinations, and weather can more easily affect that operation. Biking and walking paths could be built, but you still run into some of the same issues that are associated with road widening and new right-of-ways. Bikes can be useful for short-distance traveling, but they don't give you a good long-distance transportation alternative. So, what do you look for? Is there anything pre-existing in some form that could be modified or upgrade that would then give people transportation options? Is there something that brings you right into Newport, perhaps right to a transportation center with local bus and ferry connections? Maybe there may just be what is considered an old form of transportation that could solve many of the issues discussed here. 
Now, what could possibly be an alternative form of transportation that decreases road traffic, is environmentally friendly, already exists in some form, doesn't require widening or creating a new right-of-way, connects to a pre-existing transportation center, can operate in all weather, move masses of people efficiently, spur economic development, and is a proven mode of transportation? Well, there is the Newport Secondary Rail Line, a criminally underutilized asset of the Rhode Island Department of Transportation. It is extremely surprising to see all of these issues Aquidneck Island and Newport, Rhode Island have, yet there isn't a train service on the island to offer shuttles to connect with the outside world. The line was built south from Fall River, Massachusetts in 1864 and has been continuously operated for the most part its entire life in one form or another. Trains could come down to Newport from Boston and other points, south through Fall River, Mass, and onto the island at Tiverton, Rhode Island. Regularly scheduled passenger service was cut in 1937, but the track stayed in place for freight use. The line was then an important transportation link for the military during World War II, when the railroad transported both people and freight to the Newport Naval Base. The line was eventually purchased by RIDA in the 1970s to preserve the right-of-way and train service. Trains continued to serve the remaining industries on the island into the 1980s, but freight trains disappeared when the industries closed up shop. In 1979, the Old Colony and Newport Railway, an all-volunteer tourist operation, opened up, providing passenger excursion trains from Newport to Portsmouth, Rhode Island. This group is credited with keeping the line open when the freight railroads previously wanted to drop it entirely with the loss of the freight business. In 1989, a dinner train, now called the Newport and Narragansett Bay Railroad, started operations on the line that continue to this day under different ownership. The tracks of the Newport Secondary are still in place today, although in various conditions. The Newport and Narragansett Bay Railroad is the designated operator of the line from the Sconnet River in Portsmouth near Tiverton, south to the train station in Newport. They operate dinner trains on the line in Portsmouth and have plans to return to Newport Station once a construction project is finished. The Olds Colony and Newport Volunteer Group exists today to help preserve the line, operate occasional excursion trains, and to advocate for the line's future uses. Rail Explorers, a very popular tourist destination, also operates rail bike excursions on the line. With three users on the line, it goes to show the Newport Secondary is a pretty important railroad line, even just for tourism, but it could also be so much more. It has the potential to bring people to work, bring tourists in to spend their money, and move freight. Now why doesn't it do these things already? Well, in the 1980s, the movable railroad bridge that connected the island to the National Rail Network was struck by a barge that rendered the bridge inoperable and beyond economical repair. This later resulted in the bridge being removed in 2007, and it has yet to be replaced. Today, a bridge to span the Sakonet River wouldn't need to be as elaborate, but would still cost a fair amount of money, which is another reason its replacement hasn't been built yet. The tracks south of the Fall River Freight Yard to Tiverton haven't seen much action since the bridge went out either. About five miles of track would need to be repaired to open the line to the Sakonet River, but about half of that has already been eyed for restoration. That section, which is about two and a half miles from the Fall River Yard to the state line, may eventually be brought back to life to move freight to a few local businesses. That would give the Newport Secondary a direct connection to the National Rail Network at Tiverton. Now, how could an old rail line help to fix all the issues of traffic congestion, pollution, and connectivity while also spurring economic development without building a new right-of-way or taking of property? Well, since the rail line already exists, the right-of-way needed to run trains on already exists, preserved by RIDOT with the help of the tourist train operators throughout the years. The right-of-way has existed in this form since 1864, so no land-taking like the highway builds of the 1950s would take place. The train stations can be built where the old stations were located historically, where the property already exists for them. 
With trains, the issue of traffic congestion would be alleviated as more people would be able to seek alternatives like the train if they were made available. With more people taking the train, less cars would be on the road, which eases congestion and reduces pollution, which then helps Rhode Island meet their carbon reduction goals. As for connectivity, the rail line would start in Fall River, Mass, where the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority is opening up the South Coast Rail Line in March 2025. South Coast Rail is a long-awaited restoration of passenger rail service from Fall River to Boston that would then offer a potential Newport train connection to Boston and other points. From the MBTA station in Fall River, the line would pass through Tiverton, Portsmouth, Middletown, and end in Newport by the pre-existing transportation center that was actually built on the original rail yard and train station site. Currently, the tourist train depot is across the street from the transportation center, but perhaps the tracks can be extended back across the street for a cross-platform transfer from a train to a shuttle bus if needed. Along the route, there could be stations in all of the towns that the line passes through. Most importantly, there could be stops to connect commuters to their jobs like those that are at the Newport Naval Base that the line passes through and alongside. Those in tourism and hospitality are only a short distance from the transportation center, and getting there can be achieved with a short walk. For tourists, they could hop off the train and catch a shuttle or tour bus or even just walk. Newport is very walkable, and I personally believe it is best seen that way without the stress of parking and then having to find your car again after a long day. Another potential use of the line is a park-and-ride shuttle for those on the island already. Those from Middletown and Portsmouth could park their car at the train station and take a shuttle train to Newport. This type of operation could be set up without a bridge over the Sakonet River, and in my opinion is reasonably obtainable with less upgrades needed than for regular commuter service like the MBTA. Anyways, you could skip the traffic, parking, stress, and could even save a little money by not paying for prime Newport parking. Another note on connectivity is the ferry service to Block Island from Newport isn't very far from the tracks. It is a short walk from the train station and transportation center to the ferry slip on America's Cup Avenue. You could hop on a train in Boston and be en route to a getaway on Block Island without ever having to hop in a car and drive. Students could also benefit from the rail service as it would make it easier for those without a car to travel. Students going to and from CCRI in Newport could walk from a train station to their classes with ease, given the rail line's close proximity to the campus. Trains sound good, but can they actually be a true alternative and reduce congestion? Yes, they can, and I'll use a local example to prove this. A very popular Rhode Island event that had a lot of traffic because 60 to 80,000 people attended found success in the use of trains. In 2016, 2017, and 18, the state of Rhode Island paid the MBTA to operate free trains to the Quonset Air Show to reduce traffic. In 2016, the trains to planes were only to operate out of Providence, but in 2017 and 2018, a Wickford train was added. It was pretty cool to see how these shuttles were successful enough to warrant multiple train sets running multiple times throughout the day from two locations. Unfortunately, the event itself hasn't happened since 2018, so these trains no longer operate, but they were successful in bringing people to and from Quonset without the use of automobiles. Another fantastic example of a passenger rail service is the MBTA Cape Flyer, a Boston to Hyannis, Massachusetts train that operates from Memorial Day weekend to Labor Day. It has been quite popular since it started in 2013, and there's been some talk on how to expand it. That might be covered in a future video, but it is a great example of a city to tourist destination train route similar to Newport. The train is popular because of the traffic associated with getting over the canal bridges in Bourne and other points on the Cape, which is similar to Newport's traffic issues. 
Now these are all great points for the use of the railroad, but how can we make it happen? Well, two Salve Regina students are looking into that. You may remember them from a video last year, but they have now chosen to look further into this topic as their senior thesis project. As part of their project, they have put out an updated survey and petition for people to fill out and sign to gauge interest in the rail line. Please take the time to fill out both if you haven't already, as it would greatly help their research and the cause. The links to their information are available in the video description, so please go check that out after finishing the video. Their petition reads as follows. There are many people living on Aquinnick Island that do not have access to private car travel. The existing bus transportation lines that connect the island's population to the Providence and Boston metropolitan areas are not sustainable for regular travel. At present, there are no other public transportation alternatives besides bus travel, and there is an opportunity for Rhode Island to utilize the existing rail infrastructure on Aquidneck Island to resolve this accessibility issue. Rhode Island, as the smallest state in the country, has the ability to be highly interconnected, and yet its infrastructure is far behind other cities in the Northeast. The Rhode Island State Legislature recently signed the Act on Climate Agreement for Carbon Neutrality by the year 2050 and must start rethinking interstate travel. Rail travel has the ability to be built in electric technology and could be a large solution to the gas-powered bus systems already in place. Also be sure to fill out the survey so they can get accurate information needed for the project to be a success. The survey should take no more than 10 minutes of your time, and you are free to answer or not answer any of the 11 questions. This survey will close on March 31, 2025. Results of the survey will be retained through June 1, 2028 on a Salve Regina University server with no personal identification markers in the data set. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more updates on the Newport Secondary Rail Line.